Okay, today I'm going to be putting my own arm in a vacuum chamber. So the number one request I've had, I think, to put in my vacuum chamber is myself. Okay, but I can't use my normal vacuum chamber to do this because the hole on the top is too big. So I've got this special jar here that I've installed my vacuum hose into. And then I'm going to stick my arm in this end and try to get a good seal right here and see if I can seal it well enough to get a good vacuum in there. So first I'm going to be putting my arm in the vacuum chamber to see what happens. And then after that, I'm going to be sticking the vacuum chamber onto my stomach area to see what happens there, to see how it's different than the arm area. So I am a little nervous to do this. Um, I've done some research on this to try to figure out what's going to happen. I know there's going to be some swelling. Um, my arm hopefully won't explode. Okay, here's my membrane where I can stick my hand in. Let's give it our first try. <laughs> I'm really nervous. Okay, okay, my hand in a vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. Oh. Ah. Okay, it's really sucking. Ah. Ah. Whoa, look. <laughs> that was only for a few seconds and not even that low of a vacuum. You can see already the blood starting to come out and my hand starting to swell. <laughs> wow. That is some crazy stuff. And also it was really hurting my fist because it was like there was a ton of, like I was holding a ton of weight with my arm like that. So I don't really dare to leave my arm in much longer than that. First, I'm scared that I'm gonna crack my arm or something with all the pressure of it sucking my arm into the end of the bottle here. And then also, <laughs> my whole arm, all the blood was getting sucked out of it right there and it was really hurting. But you can also see there are these tiny little, a bunch of tiny little red spots all throughout, especially in this area of my arm, not on my hand, but on this thinner skinned area of my arm. There's little red spots all up and down it, especially right there. So that's new, I didn't have that before. So it just started sucking the blood right out of my skin. That is crazy. And my arm kind of feels bruised all over. So what I didn't like about that method is it just kept sucking my arm in and it was pushing against the end and I felt like it was really hurting my wrist and my arm. Um, so another way to do it is to use a part of my body that can't get sucked in. So I'm gonna put it on my stomach for as long as I can stand. Um, this is similar to if you've ever heard of cupping. It's where you light a candle in a glass bottle and you stick it on you and it depletes the oxygen in there a little bit and makes a little bit of a vacuum in there. And you leave it on there and it leaves some nice welts on you. So I'm gonna try that with my vacuum, only it's a much, much stronger vacuum than is created in cupping. So I'm gonna see how long I can stand to leave it on with my vacuum. Okay, so to give myself better control, I made a little hole in the inlet here that I can cover and uncover with my finger to control the vacuum so I don't destroy my stomach here. <laughs> okay, my stomach in a vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. Oh, man. Ah. Ah. Oh, man. With that, the part that really hurts more than anything is the edge of my skin at the vacuum because this part's getting sucked in and this part's just getting stretched out. So right around the edge there, it's just stretching my skin out. So it shows the swelling that would happen in your entire body. Oh man, that hurts. Okay, so what would happen if you were exposed to the vacuum of space? So NASA has a bioastronautics data book, second edition. <laughs> and 
they have a chapter that discusses animal studies of decompression in a vacuum. So what they say is that you would remain conscious for about 9 to 11 seconds. After the initial rush of gas from your lungs during de decompression, gas and water vapor will continue to flow outward through the airways and this continual evaporation will cool the mouth and nose to near freezing temperatures. But the remainder of the body will also become cooled but more slowly. And then in a rapid sequence thereafter, paralysis will be followed by generalized convulsions and paralysis once again. So during this time, water vapor will rapidly form in the soft tissues and in the venous blood. And this water vapor will cause great swelling in the body, perhaps twice its original size. So your heart rate will rise initially but will fall afterwards. Your arterial blood pressure will also fall over a period of 30 to 60 seconds. Your venous pressure will rise due to distension in the venous system. So due to the increased pressure in your venous blood, there will essentially be no circulation of your blood through your body. So it's very unlikely that a human exposed to a vacuum will have more than five to 10 seconds to help themselves. So needless to say, you do not want to be exposed to a vacuum. It's not quite the explosion that they show in movies sometimes, but you would swell to about two times your size. You would go unconscious very quickly and most likely die. So stay safe kids. Whenever you go to space, always wear your space suit. Oh, it's going, oh my gosh. Oh wow. Ah. Oh. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Wait, that hardly even got down to any pressure. <laughs> First of all, it just sucked in my hand because atmospheric pressure out here was pushing my whole arm into the chamber. So it's really hard to just stick your appendage in <laughs> without getting your whole body sucked in. Hey, thanks for watching again. I hope you enjoyed this video of me putting myself in a vacuum chamber. If you have any other crazy suggestions, put them in the comments section and I'll look through them. Anything you want to see me put in my hydraulic press or my vacuum chamber or shoot with my supersonic ping pong balls or shoot out of that cannon, let me know and I'll see you next time.